Hello, everyone. My name is Erin Johnson. Welcome to Think Tank Television. Today, we have with us as a guest, uh, Ms. Maria Fernandez from the New Heights Charter School in Brockton. And um, it's really exciting because at the New Heights School, their students can graduate with a high school diploma and an associate's degree. So hi, Maria. Hi, Erin. How are you? It's great to have you here. Thank you for um, having me. Yeah, this is wonderful. And um, can you please tell me um, what an early college school is? Sure. So um, my name is Maria Fernandez, and right now I am serving as the director of early college and post-secondary partnerships. Um, and I do work at New Heights Charter School of Brockton. And as an early college school, we're actually um, the first and only wall-to-wall -wall early college school in the state of Massachusetts. And what that means is that every student who attends our school um, has the opportunity to graduate from our school with at least 12 college credits. Um, but we do have the ultimate goal of having 50% of our students um, graduate with an associate's degree along with their high school diploma. Um, so as an early college school, we do prepare our students who are in grades six through 12 um, to be ready for college level classes in um, as early as ninth grade or whenever they're ready, so even earlier than that. Mm -hmm. um, and they can begin taking college classes in the ninth grade all the way through their um, senior year. That's so incredible. Did you say they start in sixth? You start preparing them in uh, sixth grade? Yep. So we are a sixth through 12 school. Um, our students begin with, some students begin with us as early as sixth grade. Um, and while they're in middle school, we are, um, they actually are taking double um, math classes, double English classes, all in preparation for college level classes. Um, the hope is that when they start their freshman year, that they are deemed college ready. Um, mm -hmm. Because we don't want to have anybody, anyone start a college class if they're not um, academically ready for a college level class. Um, all of our students will have the opportunity, but we want to make sure that we're setting them up for success. Um, so in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, they take um, traditional middle school classes. And then in ninth grade, we um, going into their ninth grade year, we will assess whether or not they're ready for college level classes or if they're going to continue with the high school, um, a traditional high school schedule. Okay, okay, that's so ambitious, but it sounds great. Um, what, what kind of an agreement did you have with, okay, I'm sorry, to do this, you have an agreement with Massasoit College, right? Yep, so Massasoit is our primary um, higher ed partner. Um, all of our classes that our students are taking towards their associate's degree are with Massasoit. Um, while they're in ninth and 10th grade, our students um, are taking classes with college professors in our building. So the professors actually come to us and they teach those students while they're there as ninth and 10th grade students. When they're ready to be full-time college students in 11th grade, we then send students over to the college where they then take the classes with professors on the campus, um, typically three to four college classes a semester. And then um, all of our seniors, whether they're taking one or four or five classes, um, do that on the campus as well. And we, we, I, will, I do have to say this year we did pilot um, some college classes with Bridgewater State University. So we're hoping to mm -hmm. build upon that um, partnership as well. So we can continue offering um, courses through Bridgewater. It, it's just so exciting. Um, so, okay, you told me, um, okay, you already, you already told me which students are eligible, eligible to enroll. So would you say the classes they take are similar to advanced placement classes or are they a little bit different? It's really difficult to, um, to compare the two. I think advanced placement has its place um, in, while students are in high school and then dual enrollment and early college classes have their place. So these are real true college level courses. Um, mm -hmm. We work really closely with the early college department at Massasoit um, to ensure that um, the, I, I don't want to say the appropriate, I guess the appropriate faculty or the right faculty are being hired. They can teach college mm -hmm. level content to high school age students. Um, it is advanced work. We're not, we don't, um, we actually encourage our professors to continue with the rigor and just um, also acknowledge the fact that they're working with high school students. So it is very rigorous coursework um, and the students do receive a lot of support so that they can be successful in these classes, but it is college level work. Mm -hmm. And what percentage did you say graduated this year with both a diploma and an associate's degree? So this year, after um, a successful completion of a um, summer one and summer two semester, um, we, are, we are on track for having 55% of our um, class of 22 earning an associate's degree. That is amazing. Okay, Thank and you. um, <laughs> welcome. And um, so when they get an associate's degree, is it in a particular major? So um, for 
our first two classes, the class that we're, we're a brand new school, our school is only, um, this is our sixth academic year. Um, so with our first two graduating classes, um, the students were um, enrolled in a liberal arts transfer degree, um, beginning with the class of 23. So next year's seniors, um, they did have more options. Uh, we did expand the, uh, the offerings and um, now students are able to enroll in a um, cr um, criminal justice transfer pathway, social sciences transfer pathway, um, media arts, business administration transfer pathway, wow. chemistry transfer pathway, and liberal arts is the default. So if a student is still unsure, we don't want to um, mm -hmm. force students into any particular pathway. If they're unsure of what they want to do when they graduate from high school, we um, they do default to the liberal arts transfer. That, that's just incredible. So is there a cost for students to participate in this? Event? No, we are a public charter school. Um, so I, I'm, I'm going to stress the public school. So our students um, do attend our school. There's no charge to them. Um, we've saved our families this year. Um, after this spring semester, we have saved our families in total um, over $1.7 million um, in tuition and fees. So our students do not pay for college classes. They don't pay mm -hmm. for um, textbooks or any college materials that they may need um, to be successful in a college class. We also provide every student um, in our school with a Chromebook. That, that's just incredible. Um, and it's just wonderful. Um, do you, what are your... Um, your, your short and long-term goals for this program? Um, in terms of short-term goals, I think every school is seeing this. We do have some gaps um, in, in learning and education and, and knowledge. Just, um, you know, with COVID, um, the pandemic definitely hit our students hard. Um, mm -hmm. So I think a lot of remediation um, and getting our students back on track mm -hmm. um, would be uh, the short-term goal. For um, long-term goals, there, there are a lot. Um, we, we do want to provide more opportunity for our students in terms of degree pathway um, offerings. We want to include, um, definitely include more career readiness um, and career exploration within our, our programming. Um, also some um, work-based learning opportunities, including internships and job shadows, um, and hopefully one day some apprenticeships. We also have found that some of our students um, are actually not interested in pursuing a, a bachelor's degree once they leave um, new heights. So we're looking into um, bringing in um, some trade programs so the students can have more technical um, hands-on education as well, if that is the, mm -hmm. if those are the fields that they're interested in going into. So we're constantly thinking about what other opportunities students um, may be interested in um, or may need in order to be successful as young adults. I just think that it was just a brilliant idea uh, for you to go ahead with this. Um, so yeah, COVID must have been problematic. How did that ultimately affect uh, like this this year, the graduating class of 22? It was tricky. Um, so our students, especially those that are in the class of, those that were in the class of 22, um, they continued, they started their first full year, well, their first year as full-time college students remotely. Um, so they were taking all their college classes either um, synchronously with professor online or asynchronously um, with just a completely online course without um, an instructor actually teaching them live. Um, they did get through it. Um, again, with a mm -hmm. lot of support, we have um, amazing folks that serve as their liaisons um, and they support mm -hmm. them while they're in the college classes. A lot mm -hmm. of outreach was done to ensure that students are attending classes, completing coursework. Um, we also offered the opportunity for students who may have been struggling to, do, um, to complete their coursework at home to come into the building um, in a very safe manner with social distancing and the masks mm -hmm. and everything that um, was required of us to do as a school, we did offer opportunity for those students to come in um, to the building if they were struggling to get this um, the work done at home. This school year, however, we did welcome all of our students back, um, mm -hmm. college students and traditional high school students um, back into the building. And we were able to then get them acclimated on the college campus, again, with a lot of support. Um, we still, you know, we still have our outreach workers supporting the students. We had required um, directed studies and, and tutoring um, for the students who needed it. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think that that's going to continue for at least another couple of years until we can kind of get over this, this pandemic hump. Yes, I hope that will happen soon. Yeah. Um, so, um, okay. So is there anything else you'd like us, you'd like to tell us? Um, I, I know something I was wondering about 
do, do you um or can you talk about um how uh that is it funded in a particular way for the school do you need extra funds to do it or is it just within a regular budget it is a very expensive model so with um us being a, a public charter school um we were we were recognized as and, and designated as an early college school and so we receive um state funding through desi um, to be able to provide this program for um, for our students um there is uh, there is opportunity for other school districts there there are a ton of early college programs um, in the state as well as um, new early college wall to wall early college um, schools that are opening up actually this fall we have two more that are going to be opening up in um, in the state of Massachusetts um, and it is it is it has been supported uh, widely throughout um, the state in uh, the funding again does come from from DESI and also um, the Board of Higher Education um, supports student uh, the partnering colleges that work with the schools that are offering this early college program. Okay, that, that's really amazing. And um, it's been great talking to you. And I, I really hope that this spreads. I think it's, it's an incredible model you've created. Probably, you know, hopefully other schools will um, feel the same way and develop that for their kids because the whole concept of free higher education is just great. And uh, I'm thrilled, I'm thrilled that your kids have so much enthusiasm for it, enthusiasm for it too, to, and uh, drive to go ahead and achieve that, you know? Um, so thank you so much for being here. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Um, no, uh, we, we're, we're very proud of our students. Um, we're very proud of the model um, that has been developed over the years in our partnership with Master Soya, and um, we'd be happy to um, share more information or, or talk to folks or other school districts who are interested in, in starting up um, an early college model as well. Thank you so much, Maria Fernandez um, from the New Heights School in Brockton. It's been wonderful to have you. And um, thank you to everyone who's been watching. Um, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.